rendering a linear video. In this part I am going to cover more details about how to export your final production. I am assuming that at this moment you have already recorded your video, you did little fixes here and there, or you engage into a full editing production of your video, but we are at the end of it and it is time to create a single video file that you're going to be able to upload somewhere on the internet for distribution to your students. So when you render a linear video, Camtasia is going to refer to it as a video without a controller or a video player. What does that mean? Well, I'm going to share one of my own productions and this is a video about how to create Creative Commons music and sound and what you're looking at right now in the screen is the video player that Camtasia is referring to. So basically you're going to have a play button as they did. You're going to have a volume button. You're going to have a closed captioning button. You're going to have expand to full screen button. And finally you're going to have another one called information that you're going to be able to manipulate if you want to have some extra information about your video embedded into this controller. So that's what it is meant with controller or video player, but at this moment we're not going to worry about that. We're going to render linear videos that will present your content from beginning to end. There are different kinds of file formats that you can use to export your video. The one that I'm going to recommend because it has been highly developed for online delivery is MP4. There are other video formats out there but they used to be better for other times and while they still work very well for certain circumstances, normally they're not that common anymore. The first one is the Windows Media Video, the QuickTime Movie, the audio and video interlaced, which is a Windows format, and the M4V video, which is for iPods and iPads and iTunes and, and things like that. At this moment, I would like to recommend you to use MP4, but obviously, as it is with anything that I've been saying so far, you can export your video in any of the other formats just to see what happens and what is the resulting file. Very well, it's time to bring Camtasia forward. Here it is. This is my news map recording once more and I am just gonna export it. I'm assuming that all the editing has already been done. And I am going to go here as we did before and I am going to click on produce and share. Now, before we have covered that the first option is going to be to share to screencast and later on we chose to export as a 720p. In this case, I'm going to ask you to go to the costume production settings. Once that you select that, you click on next. And now we're going to see all the different possibilities for our video productions. We have the ones that I have recommended not to use. And we also have an mp3 file which only will keep the audio of your video and a GIF which will only keep individual images of your video. But the one that I would like to always recommend is the mp4. So you click there, you click on next. And now we're going to see a place where you can actually select to have or not have the controller. So if you're going to upload this file to an individual server at your university or an individual server that you own, it is quite adequate to do this, to export it with a controller. If you're going to upload this video file to YouTube or to Google Drive, it is better to not use the controller even though at the end of the day it will not really affect if we can upload the file or not to YouTube. So it is better just not to have it at all and to move forward without it. Um, when it comes to the size, you're going to be able to determine once again the size of your final production. In this case, we could go to numbers that are bigger than 1280 
and we're going to have a video that is very very large but is going to be pixelated so normally the way things go is that it is always recommended for you to move downwards that rather than moving upwards in the video size so i'm going to return to my file size there we go and this is my recording size but imagine that i am i'm exporting videos for a population that has a very slow internet connection and we are not going to use youtube or google drive then we will have to change these production settings to something different so the recording will be smaller in size but still has a good resolution um, these days in the United States uh, where we have plenty of broadband availability it is better just to keep it at a size like this and it will work just fine when it comes to the video settings I will recommend to leave the frame rate as automatic uh, basically this determines how fast the frames have to be depending on the content that you're showing in your video I would always recommend to encode using quality as the most important feature and to always select the highest possible quality for your video when it comes to the keyframe this is going to help your video remain in sync with your audio as time passes by if for any reason your video and your audio are not in sync anymore it might be a good idea to export your video once again by reducing this number to three seconds or even less to one second the size of your file will increase a little bit but the synchronization between the video and the audio will remain there i will leave this as it is when it comes to the audio settings i will always recommend to encode the audio and i will always recommend to go beyond or faster or bigger files than 80 kilobits per second so if you select between 80 and 128 I think that your production is going to have a very high quality and the compression is going to deliver a fairly small file so those are the different settings that you can establish when you are producing the videos individually and now you can click on next here in the video info section you can include information about you about the subject that you're ta uh, that you're tackling and the information about you and some information for iTunes if this is the case once that you're done you click on next and then you're gonna be asked what it is the production of your name in this case I will still recommend to you that you don't use spaces and that you don't use any of the symbols in your keyboard and none of the punctuation marks and it will all work uh, fairly fine so I would name these the demonstration for faculty sometimes the capitalization of different words help uh, define where they begin and where they end you select the folder where you would like to uh, export I recommend always to have these organized produced files into subfolders because all the individual files that will be created or could be created for your video are all going to be included in a very neat folder if we don't do this our files are going to arrive with all of our other media and it's going to be difficult to distinguish which ones to grab at the time of uploading files to a server or anywhere else I always like to see the production results mostly because it gives me a screen telling me that everything has been done and I always check my videos after I have produced them so I can just be certain that they have no errors very well once that this has been done you click on finish and then the rendering process takes place remember that this rendering process is a fairly long process and depending on the length of your video it can take five minutes to to a good hour or hour and a half and well you have to prepare for these type of processes to take place so if you're trying to edit your videos just before delivering you might find yourself in problems later on because this process of rendering and later on the process of uploading might be fairly uh, slow very well I'm not gonna finish this process uh, but we have covered all the different ways to render a linear video